Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating 2D channel geometry and mesh in OpenFoam. In this tutorial, we will learn to create a 2D channel geometry using block mesh tict, mesh a geometry, label the boundary patches, and view the mesh in ParaView. To record this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Linux OS version 18.04, OpenFoam version 7, ParaView version 5.6.0, and GEdit text editor. You may use any other editor of your choice. The files used in this tutorial are available in the code files link on this tutorial page. Please download and extract them. Make a copy and then use them while practicing. The problem description of 2D flow in a channel is as shown in the diagram. This is the geometry for 2D flow in a channel. The faces of the geometry are inlet and outlet, bottom and top walls, back face and front face. Open the terminal by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T keys. At the prompt, type the following command to go to the run directory. Here onwards, please remember to press the enter key after typing each command in the terminal. Let us now copy the case of flow in a channel from the tutorials directory into the run directory. Type the following command to do so. We will only be creating and meshing the geometry. Hence, we do not need the boundary conditions folder. Type the following command to delete the boundary conditions folder. The block mesh ticked file is located in the system folder. Let us open it in any text editor. I am doing it in gedit text editor. We can now see the block mesh dict file. Select the contents of the file from vertices to the end of the document as shown. We don't need the selected content as we will be entering the input parameters. Hence, delete the selected section. The remaining content is common for all block mesh dict files. The unit of the coordinates entered in the block mesh dictionary needs to be specified. It is defined using the keyword convert to meters. The value 1 indicates that the values of all the coordinates are in meters. Open the channel.txt file that you had downloaded in a text editor. Copy the entire content of the text file. Let me switch back to the block mesh dict file. Paste the copied contents into the block mesh dict file as shown. The vertices of the channel geometry are numbered as indicated. The vertex numbering starts from 0. The coordinates of the vertices are entered as shown. Note that the vertices are entered in the ascending order of their vertex numbers. Vertex 0 is located at the origin. Its coordinates are entered as shown. The x, y and z coordinates of vertex 1 are 4, 0 and 0 respectively. Its coordinates are entered as shown. Similarly, the coordinates of vertex 2 and 3 are entered as shown. The set coordinate of all the points on the front face is 2. The coordinates of front face vertices 4, 5, 6 and 7 are entered as shown. For meshing, open form requires 3 dimensional blocks to be defined. The blocks are specified using the vertices that define them. We use a single block in our geometry. 
the block is defined as shown. We use hexahedral blocks for meshing. The order in which the vertices are specified define the block. We first enter the vertices of the lower xy plane, in this case the back face. We start from the origin and enter the vertices of the face. When viewed along the negative z direction, the vertices should be ordered counterclockwise. The vertices of the back face are defined as shown. The vertices of the front face are entered in the same order as that of the back face. Let us start defining the meshing parameters of the block. We first define the number of cells in each direction of the block. The number of cells in each direction is defined as shown. This indicates that there are 40 cells in x direction and 25 cells in y direction. There is only one cell along z direction indicating that the simulation is 2D in xy plane. Next. Let us define how the mesh is graded. We use simple grading as the cells have uniform expansion in all directions. Let us now define the expansion ratios in each direction. Expansion ratio along a direction is the ratio of width of the end cell to that of the start cell in that direction. Since the cell width is uniform in all directions, the expansion ratio is 1. Please refer to the additional reading material on this tutorial page for details. It has more details on defining a block. Now, let us define the edges. Edges are used to define arc or spline edges. Since all the edges of channel geometry are straight lines, we leave it empty. Let us label the boundary patches. The labels are used to impose boundary conditions on the respective faces. Boundary labels are defined using the boundary list. The bottom face of the geometry is named bottom wall. The patch type of the boundary is defined using the keyword type. The bottom face resembles the characteristics of a solid wall. Hence, the face is of the type wall. Vertices define a face. The vertices and their order for a face is defined using the keyword faces. Since the block face is a quadrilateral, it is defined by four vertices. When viewed from inside the block, the vertices of the face should be ordered clockwise. Keeping this in mind, the vertices of the bottom wall are ordered as shown. Following the same convention, the top face is named top wall and is defined as shown. We are creating the geometry for a 2D simulation in XY plane. We do not need to solve in the Z direction. Hence, we keep the front and back faces empty. The back and front faces are defined as shown. The inlet and outlet faces need the application of boundary condition. Since they do not contain any geometric or topological information, a generic label would suffice. Such generic boundaries are labeled using the keyword patch. The inlet and outlet faces are defined as shown. We have finished labeling all the boundary patches. Next, we merge faces using the merge patch pairs field. We merge faces when a patch face from one block is connected to a patch face of another block. Our geometry has only one block and there are no patches to merge. Therefore, we leave the merge patch pairs field empty. We have entered all the necessary fields. Save and close the file. In the terminal, type 
CD space channel 395. Let us mesh the geometry. Type block mesh and press enter to do so. The meshing is complete. To view the mesh in Paraview, type Paraform and press enter. Click on the green colored apply on the left side of your window in the properties tab. Click on surface available in the representation toolbar and change it to surface with edges. You can now see the mesh structure of the front face. Close the ParaView window. With this, we have come to the end of the tutorial. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we have learned to create a 2D channel geometry using block mesh date. Mesh a geometry, label the boundary patches, and view the mesh in ParaView. As an assignment, create a geometry having dimensions 5 meters, 4 meters, and 3 meters along X, Y, and Z axis. Mesh the geometry such that it has 50, 40, and 1 cell along X, Y, and Z axis. And view the mesh in ParaView. The video at the following link summarizes the Spoken Tutorial project. Please download and watch it. We conduct workshops using Spoken Tutorials and give certificates. Please contact us. Please post your timed queries in this forum. Do you have any general or technical questions? Please visit the forum given in this link. The FOSSE team coordinates solving feasible CFD problems of reasonable complexity using open form. We give honorarium and certificates to those who do this. For more details, please visit these sites. The Spoken Tutorial Project is supported by MHRD Government of India. The script for this tutorial is contributed by Ashley Melvin. And this is Sweta Shredar from IIT Bombay signing off. Thank you for joining.